impact many cases of autism, but we've asked the parents to fill out a questionnaire which measures autistic traits. And this takes us back to the idea of a spectrum because the new way of thinking about autism is that it runs right through the population, uh, that we all have some autistic traits, and it's only when you have a lot of them that you might need a diagnosis. So here we're asking the parents to fill out a questionnaire where we can count how many autistic traits each child has. And you can see some of the items in the questionnaire which relate to autistic traits. So now we can look to see if there's any relationship with prenatal testosterone in this sample of otherwise typically developing children. And once again, we find this positive correlation. That means the higher your fetal testosterone, the more autistic traits a child is showing. I want to underline that we haven't yet found any direct link between testosterone levels and clinical diagnosis of autism. To do that, you would need very large samples. We had available in this study a few hundred samples of amniotic fluid, which we keep in our freezer, in the deep freeze, for analysis. But in order to really test the question about whether testosterone is a risk factor for autism, you would need thousands and thousands of samples. So in our next uh, project, we're collaborating with scientists in Denmark who have a biobank where they've been storing amniotic fluid in test tubes in the deep freeze since 1980, and they have 90,000 samples, which is plenty for looking uh, at cases of autism, and we hope to have a result during 2008 to see whether it really is the case that elevated levels of fetal testosterone can predict if a child will go on to develop autism. Well, I want to finish with just um, some practical applications of research, because research has to happen at the basic level to understand causes, but we also need research uh, at the very practical level to understand what helps. Here we've got an example of a DVD, educational software, to try to promote uh, learning in children with autism uh, in the area of emotion recognition. And this just shows you a still photograph, but on the DVD, each of the faces is an actor, and when you click on the face, you get uh, a little movie showing you that actor expressing a particular emotion. So it's an opportunity for children who find emotion recognition difficult to learn emotions through computers, computers often being a, a much easier way for them to learn than the complexity of the real social world. And what you can see on the right here is that um, when we had two groups of children with autism, the group in blue who were given the DVD to work with over a 10-week intervention um, improved significantly more than the other group of children with autism who weren't given the DVD. So this is an example of very specialized educational software, just as we've seen with other disabilities like dyslexia. If you have dyslexia and you have difficulties reading or spelling, there are now um, educational software available to help a child learn to overcome their difficulties. And what we hope to see in autism is more products like this available to help children with autism uh, improve. The other example is targeted at preschool children with autism. Again, this is a DVD, but it's an animation, and uh, it's designed uh, a bit like um, the movie Thomas the Tank Engine, which is a, a favorite for many children with autism. But what we've done is take a range of diff different vehicles, not just trains, but trams and uh, tractors, and uh, many different kinds of vehicles, and we've put faces onto the vehicles, uh, and the faces express emotions. And we're giving this to children who are very young, who are on the autistic spectrum, because we know that they often love systems, like vehicles, 
that move in a very predictable way along tracks so that there are no surprises. So they'll watch animations like this without having to be pressured to watch them. They're drawn to them anyway. And it's a way for us to include social skills teaching without the child even realizing it. They're getting exposed to looking at faces and looking at emotions um, whilst they're watching movies about trains and other vehicles. And what you can see is this group of children with autism on a test of emotion recognition were measured um, over one month when they watched the, the DVD for 15 minutes a day. And you can see this significant improvement in their skills actually catching up to normal levels on uh, a test of emotion recognition over a one-month intervention program. So these kinds of approaches offer a lot of hope um, because it means that these children are not unteachable, as we used to think. They're not impossible to work with, as used to be said, that there are practical methods which do lead to improvements. I don't want you to give the I don't want you to go away with the impression that these are in any way a cure. These are simply showing that there are methods which are beneficial. And on this particular test, it's simply measuring emotion recognition. We don't know whether this has an impact on their everyday behavior in the playground, for example. So we shouldn't claim more than is reasonable from these results, but it certainly suggests that it's promising that different methods can be helpful. So let me finish with some conclusions. Uh, the first conclusion, again, underlining the point about today, which is facts and fiction, is that autism is a neurological condition, so it's the result of atypical brain development arising for largely genetic reasons. The second is that we see that autism involves areas of difficulty, particularly in empathy, but also areas of strength. And when we think about children on the autistic spectrum, we should keep in mind both sides. It's very easy to be over-focused on the difficulties and to ignore what the child can do. And yet, when you focus on what the child can do, that not only gives the child a more positive experience for their self-esteem and their self-confidence, but it also leads to new teaching methods. So when we're presenting emotions through computers, it's precisely because computers may be much more systematic, much easier as a method for them to learn than uh, the very busy nature of social interaction. And the strengths seem to be in systemizing. And the last point of my conclusion here is that both empathy and systemizing show very clear sex differences or gender differences in the general population. Um, and we also know that autism shows very clear gender differences. So research really needs to understand what's giving rise to these gender differences. And one major mechanism may be testosterone and the genes associated with these. I want to invite you to visit our website if you want any more re uh, information about any of these studies. And otherwise, thank you very much for your attention.